to introduce music bara in the fifth technical session of the lab workshop. Dr. Debozit Bara is currently working as an assistant professor in the Center for Nano and Material Science of Zain University, Bangalore. He is associated to research and development projects based on renewable, renewable energy platform. He was staff scientist in the group of Professor Muller at Laboratory of Energy Science and Engineering Institute for Energy Technology, ETH Zurich, followed by a physicist postdoctoral fellow, uh, po postdoctoral fellow position at the, uh, at the Advanced Light Source Division of Ernest Orlando Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory. Hope your gracious presence will make this session highly beneficial for all the participants. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I would like to request Dr. Debozit Bora to deliver his presentation. Over to you, sir. You please proceed. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very much, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, both ma'am, madam, for such a kind introduction. Just give me a minute, sir. There are some technical problems from my side because my screens have been not shown here. I don't know what's the reason. Okay, sir. You take your time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably somebody need to give me control for sharing the screens. I ask for the control because I don't have the control options here. But no.
say you could have some free flying in the back of there. So that was it. Have you uh, have you have you seen the uh, arrow marks near downward? Downside the screen. Have you seen the arrow one? Have you are you listening to me? That was it. You are muted. Okay, I toss it. Tolots. Take us okay. I'll can't sing the lot. Click to play for this. Okay. You're muted. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. Just a minute. Yeah. Because it's automatically updated the software. That's the problem. So I'll share it now. You can share it. Okay. Can you able to see my screen? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, everything has been able. Okay. Then uh, okay, slides are visible now? No, uh, yeah, yeah. Right now it's visible. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for hassle at the beginning because uh, my uh, computer actually just automatically updated Microsoft Team. That's why there's some problem about privacy settings and all this. So let us start actually. Uh, I'm a pure, first of all, I'm a pure experimentalist, but uh, Binudda told me to just give a talk. Uh, one time last in 2013, I gave my one of the presentation at Central College in Science Department. So basically, uh, I'd like to talk today about transition from wet lab to virtual in the COVID era. So the, this COVID uh, pandemic is uh, itself is a, now is a great headache for everybody. So it's just uh, make a stagnant the whole world. So in that case, we are basically academician as well as students who are involved in various aspects of experimental related studies. So they are facing a lot of trouble even in our postgraduate program. We have a lot of problem in uh, just giving the right education to students. Uh, theoretically, it is possible, but still lack of black, uh, blackboard and whiteboard itself is not good. So this um, offline class is it's, it's always good. That's we recommend, uh, I mean, for a good education, for good understanding of students, because student understanding is very important. So let us come back to this wet, uh, wet lab. So wet lab, basically, I'm talking about chemistry perspective. So there is a chemistry session, but not only chemistry. So with, uh, what are aspects of laboratory experiments like uh, uh, we have uh, to deal with, like physics-based experiments, engineering-based experiments. But physics and engineering, we have a lot of uh, pro problems got solved because we can have a lot of software. 
but chemistry is a really big problem. Still, there are some softwares are there for like a simulating everybody, every type of experiments, what we are going to tell. So let us uh, first see this picture that is basically a Zoom, I mean, meeting on Microsoft Team. Then the instructor can sit with this type of, I mean, apparatuses in a laboratory environment to start, I mean, to transition to this virtual platform. So there, uh, there is, a, if you are interested, because my first 30 minutes of my lectures will be, I already last, uh, just lost 10 minutes, but I'll just 30 to 35 minutes, I'll talk 18 slides about, uh, about my, uh, like a, some kind of introduction and some about virtual lab, what's going on really all around corner, all the corners of the world. Then I'll give a lot of uh, simulations. I have downloaded a spe uh, specific software for because I'm a nanotechnologist, so st then students can get acquainted with such kind of nano experiments. Even they can try at home. So just simulate some molecules, simulate some carbon nanotubes, fullerenes. So with that expect, I'll cover in 45 minutes till 3.30. So let us start now. So what's uh, basically, I like to talk about this uh, small article in Willy Journal that is called Virtual Laboratories During Coronavirus Pandemic. So as you know, coronavirus disease is not just going down every day. A lot of variants are coming out, a lot of mutated variants are coming out. And it gets a lot of problems like uh, economically, in governmental perspective, political perspective, geopolitical perspectives. It's, everything is messing up. So, but the education sector, we have a lot of problems with regard to like a higher education, uh, where we need a lot of experiments to show the like a like a theory plus experiment we have to show to the student. And for in this regard, this paper mentioned about this how these undergraduate and postgraduate students have been affected due to this uh, laboratory closure. So uh, be, uh, based on that, some virtual experiments, like in our case also, we try to do uh, uh, in, uh, in, our, uh, in our laboratory, not, uh, I mean, by following some standardized, that's a department, education ministry actually put some, uh, uh, le, like a national institute list where some kind of virtual experiments can be performed, but I did not bring the Those experiments here because some experiments like in this uh, workshop. So, but chemistry, uh, uh, I would like to show uh, really from that software that is like a freely available software from Georgia Tech University, and it's very nice software. So let us uh, go by step by step now how this uh, actually this concept of transitioning from wet lab experiment to virtual lab experiment is evolving. So here experiments have been. Uh, First, like a suspended, like a one and a half year, we have to suspend due to this all of this pandemic situation. So the virtual laboratory could be a powerful educational tool. So virtual laboratory is also a bit expensive. So if we have to buy those software, so we have to go for some like a freely available softwares. Uh, that's government of India education ministry already gives some type of experiments to show to the students how it really works. Like uh, many institutes, all IITs are involving there. Amrita Vidyapitham, that is one of the private institutes in Kerala. So they have also, um, like, uh, you can, if you Google it, then you can find those kind of experiments to show to your students. So now, question is, why virtual lab? And now, how will it uh, influence students? Because student understanding is on the student's presence or student interest. To just accumulate the student interest in online platform is the biggest challenge for all these teachers. Like in our case, in university level, in college level, in secondary level, it's a really bit tough because to concentrate on what's going on. So sometimes in our case, we cannot see students. And they are like a present or absent. There are a lot of challenges. Okay, but we have to give the best uh, experience to them about this online education. That is a theory part, but as well lab. So hundreds of practical sessions in the academy and now have been suspended. So the, um, like from 2020 to 2021. So this, this challenging situation now causing some extreme stress among students, basically all kind of practicals. So because without practicals, the science students cannot go for a real world. Like if they want to do some PhD, 
if they don't know how to take a weight of a salt in a balance, and how to taste what kind of elements are present, like in high secondary practicals, like some gravimity experiment, then it will be a real problem. So this caused a lot of anxiety among students. So our students even got a lot of anxiety, a lot of complaints also come. That's why we open now some weight lab experiment, but it is very rich. So we have to follow a lot of protocols. So next question is this, next part is this, this experiment, as I said, is very vital because this depend the student skills is important in this regard because theoretical knowledge is one part and experimental knowledge is one part so we can give a lot of theory like what is the principle what is the matter of hypothesis we can explain everything in the blackboard but without hands-on it's very difficult to go for a real world application like to work in an industry so industrial employment is fully based on experiment that's the worry for these chemists uh, that also could be a worry for physicists, that could be also a worry for other literature-based uh, things where they might like a mass communication, also one part, where what we have to do the ex um, experiment in a studio-based experiment. So these are some of the stories that's going on. So the virtual lab, so we that actually will fulfill now the purpose of biology, chemistry and other sciences. So here, what could students do? So we can well, we can give some set of experiments to perform and hope. So I'll show some slides, actually pictures of taken from different journals, paper. So what type of experiments, also there are a lot of Google uh, experiments are available, but we can um, set some laboratory experiment and give uh, to students to practice. And then, as, then there are also some assessment thing will come that every teacher have to assess whether that experiment is they are able to understand or not. So this, uh, this actually, that is now a possibility, like uh, there is a concept called dead campus. So now somebody tries to like do this whole academic platform like uh, online, like in our universities, like our business said, that oh, you don't have to go to campus, we can do it, everything online. But uh, it is not really true. In virtual laboratories cannot replace entirely the physical experiments. Mm -hmm. So we can have a lot of limitations here. So that limitation we have today, I'll show, I'll discuss during my presentation here. So this, especially now during this COVID-19 pandemic, so students can perform experiments online. There are some advantages, which are time limitation. So, and we can give instant feedback. Then familiar is also the health and safety regulations because many COVID protocols we have to always follow. And repeat the experimental activities, like the software that I'm going to show in another th after 30 minutes, the students can have an idea. Uh, they can uh, then how to just re experiment, repeat it, and to understand, visualize some molecules, visualize some atoms, so like this. So let us go to this directly to this part. That is a news coming in chemical and engineering news. That is an ACS newsletter, American Chemical Society. So these challenges of teaching online chemistry courses, because online chemistry courses is very difficult because uh, we there are a lot of things involved here. We cannot simulate everything. We can simulate. Uh, we cannot simulate the synthesis process online. Yeah. So we have to optimize various parameter, temperature, humidity, many things. So for that we need to go for a software developer, and for that it is cost will be issue, cost will be increased, but Yes, there are some advantages in this regard is that you have toxic part that whatever toxic waste we are generated, that is um, been like a uh, cut out. That's fine, but toxic waste we, 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 I mean waste we can take care uh, by following these EPA rules, Environmental Protection Agency, US based rules. But uh, that's not a problem. Uh, but problem is that uh, to just simulate everything in chemistry is really tough. So that's why I like to uh, just show some challenges, what kind of challenges and how these challenges can take over in very prestigious chemistry university, um, chemistry colleges in the world. That's called UC Berkeley, which is what I'm the alma mater of this institute. So my laboratory in the US actually run by UC Berkeley. So there's UC Berkeley campus, then I walk in the top of the hill. Uh, that UC Berkeley is the topmost chemistry department in the world. They, they have adapted to this environment. 
So they took what they do, uh, do which can be helpful for uh, like a regular, I mean, uh, college-based chemistry teachers or like university teachers for like me. So they have put provided some knowledge so how to just uh, learn and just and to then give and the teaching methodology to the students. So they took some photograph and record some experiments. In this case, the PhD students in their university basically helpful. They did they record the whole experiment and they, they just upload it and we can share by Zoom or Microsoft Team. So arranging from like a this the set of experiments and photograph. It cover all aspects like a BSc course, undergraduate, or, but undergraduate education in the US is MS based, so undergraduate it's PhD. So in in our terms, in, in like a, in college based education in the, under Dibugo University, so we can design some experiments and take some photograph and just share with students just following these protocols what they have suggested. After they made presentation that students download where all the necessary data comes. So students can download even the, uh, what they just uploaded all the material like a G drive then can download and practice it. So we have some special software like it's called Origin to do our research. For instance, we are uh, uh, the chemistry some teachers knows about UVB spectrum. So we have some data available for UVB spectrum. So let us give to the students and then students can just plot it then understand how this absorption peak gets formed, then followed by the blm bach law and other electronic structure theory, molecular orbital theory, balance band theory, all these things are coming together. So this is a lab manager story from UC Berkeley College of Chemistry. So that's the guy, uh, that's actually chemistry professor at UC Berkeley. So how they started, so learning goes totally virtual, thanks to COVID, they are thanking COVID because it's a new way of learning being developed by the humanities. I mean, they have started, not they have started, but many people have started. So this is just a worksheet of a electrochemical reaction. So um, just first we have to understand, give the student like a, how, what is the flavor of electrochemistry, how oxidation happens, how reduction happens. Then uh, we have to assess, self-assess the um, students, like it's the salt bridge, it is not visible fully, because it's just the electrochemistry things, um, they are trying to understand, um, just give some lectures to students. Um, and this is a discussion worksheet like we have to make first. Then we can go to the simulation, next onwards, we define that software is available. So this is uh, now, this, uh, the happens basically here so this is a uh, like a for this coronavirus pandemic caused a lot of problem like as i mentioned in my early part of the lectures so this uh, order they have developed this methodology like this there's a youtube video also they have developed like how are uh, these uh, simple experiments they can work this youtube they then uploaded it this is a, like a, I read it for you. That gadget student actually measure the heat content of a biofuel. The biofuel is kind of a fuel that is a, an, a, another renewable energy that is a biomass based fuel. So this is a heat, heat content of how uh, people just go to it like a, the graduate students, say a, like a lab instructor, they can help it like going to blackboard or whiteboard. They explain the theory what the heat content of this biofuel then they will record the video, then upload it. Then the professor will explain. So how, what's going on and how this theory works So and how we have to deal with. So that is the whole scenario at UC Berkeley. Um, I mean, to tackle about this virtual lab, to just transition to the virtual lab. So the student in, in instructor, they have found that yeah, student and instructor both adapt. So this new methodology and both student and um, they, is, is very easy for them to adapt because at Zoom, we can share all these things. Like as I mentioned, as I do my uh, theory class, so I always share my recorded lecture with students. So like this um, in the virtual, is not a completely virtual lab, but it's a semi-partial virtual lab. So here we can draw it, so you can explain it. Uh, then. And in this case, this hot bot, our student and instructor will both adapt. And a lot of hurdles can also come in other case of experiments. 
like a DNA sequencing, that is a molecular biology experiments, but the chemical biology, that is also part of chemist, chemical sciences. So in this type of experiments, like we need real machines to do that because we cannot simulate and it is really costly. So this is the story of Berkeley. Then we'll come up like another practical science at home in a pandemic world. So these are some set of experiments that is available in NET. So if I, I'll show you now how this clockwise from bottom to left. So clockwise like uh, here and to go uh, to this direction. So first is like a, uh, is a simple way to measure molecular dimension that is inspired by um, Erwin, Erwin Langmuir. So Langmuir is a surface physicist of the very old type. It's a, he actually discovered this Langmuir adsorption isotherm. So here what we can do, so you using the talcum powder, sprinkle on water. So just the talcum powder, if we sprinkle it water, then we are able to measure its molecular dimension. Then next is like a baking a cake. So nowadays there is a like a food-based chemistry comes up. So a scalable analog of complex synthesis. This is a this cake synthesis is like a simple kitchen chemistry, but it's really involved a lot of complex synthesis, a lot of chemical reactions taking place together. So this is like a, how this complex synthesis works that we can able to understand in, inside home. For instance, wheat, what kind of compound is present? So if you mix it with proteins, so what there are some bi carbohydrate protein based chemistry will work. So this type of like a uh, home based experiments, they have like uh, suggested. Then next is the like a, this one is the optical rotation and biofringence. This is a uh, physics based experiment using an LCD screen and linear polarizing filter. So this is uh, like this type of small, small experiment. Also, they are providing some kits uh, like in olden days, uh, in US based uh, schools and colleges, they are providing chemistry kit, physics kit, to just uh, give, have a like a flavor of the, what they are going to learn. So these type of uh, things also we can provide in this case to in Central College high secondary students to just to give a flavor. It's a school-based education, but we can just have a flavor of the theory that we have to search in the website because it's available. Then next, cryoscopy we can do. We can measure with the thermocouple, what's the uh, temperature, what's the absolute temperature, then Kelvin scale, how to convert. Uh, this is kind of a basic thermodynamics we can able to understand. So let us go to that paper now, Journal of Chemical Education. So another 15 minutes, I will cover all this uh, part. So there is a secondary education, K-12, which is a high secondary in colleges in our um, everywhere in India. So uh, this is this online experimentation during COVID-19 secondary school closures. So they are, have proposed some methodology and student perception. perception. This is especially for teachers only, whoever present here, not for, for students can get boredom of these things, but uh, the, I just specifically put it, uh, because it's a workshop for teacher plus students. So that's why I'm putting it uh, together. So let us uh, start this paper, what uh, it's a journal of chemical education. So this experiments play a tremendous role in chemistry education, but the impact on hands-on chemistry laboratory and student knowledge still requires research and better understanding. So uh, like uh, we have already discussed the, the, how these experiments are inevitable part of this chemistry education because chemistry is like everywhere. So whatever the, now the vaccine development for COVID, all these uh, molecular biology research, all the reagents, and then understanding the protein structure, everything involved chemistry. Even is, I like this concept of interdisciplinary in this virtual lab. So virtually we can mix it together. Um, I mean, physics plus chemistry, how it works together. So what the, in this paper they have described during the COVID-19 pandemic outbreak, and uh, it's just like, a, as, a, as we mentioned already, that it's a, like a lot of challenges for our, as a teacher. So this, uh, because it is secondary school, teachers, it is like a high secondary, it's very preliminary part of science um, and gateway. 
uh, to a gateway to the science world. So that's why it's very difficult to give them the flavor of these um, experiments and how this, so they, that's why we have to design very small, small experiments and then we have to give them the, I mean, the knowledge, the theoretical knowledge and small experiment, then assessment. So that is the, basically the idea and they propose how experiments should be conducted in, in like a secondary level can be introduced into the following form. First, we have to return description assisted with photos. For instance, if we want to do a seed-based titration, so uh, we have to give this like a pipette, what is the burrette photos and everything that does. So like a part we have to segregate out, then we have to discuss and what are those parts. Then what are the level of indicators? So what is acid, what is basis, what is Anderson Hasselbalch equation, what is pH? So this then we have to record. So at first we make our own experiment and record it like that. You see Berkeley team, they did it. And we can upload it into YouTube. And then like then YouTube video, we can share it before the class. And they can practice, they can then idea. Then they have, uh, then we can go to some virtual simulator and then they can, the, whatever the data they will get it, they will log it to their system. And this is kind of simple linear simulation, virtual laboratories. Uh, but there are also some multi-thread simulations, okay? Uh, multi-thread simulation means simulations together. So we are talking about only one simulation here, but we have to do simulation in very multi-thread simulations. Like we have to de deal with many different parameters that I am going to show today uh, to in case of this nanotechnology virtual based experiment. Okay, so this sim uh, this sim uh, this remote laboratory is another concept that is remote control uh, is uh, is kind of a concept that we are uh, been aware of that actually during my presence in advanced light source. Uh, which is uh, uh, basically a very complex experiment we have performed uh, in a very big, big machine, like the size of the football field. So uh, sometimes we cannot go there. And now in COVID pandemic, what they are doing, so I'm going a little bit advanced from the secondary level, level. They are doing some remote experiment that is called Internet of Things. So that is control everything by internet, but sitting at home with the joystick, the joystick. so they're like a gaming. Uh, this uh, Microsoft X stations, so what they are playing, so they can control everything like that. Uh, we can, but this is very difficult to implement here uh, in just for the students here because they have been funded well. They can develop this type of technology very quickly. But uh, as a college teacher, as a university teacher, my like in a private platform, it's also difficult for us. So we can follow this um, uh, small, small like a uh, photos, so what is video recording. Then this live interest demonstration via Zoom, then um, uh, Microsoft Team, etc. So let us go to the next point that is methodology of the research. So research in the terms that research is nothing but all kind of experiments and then understanding the philosophical point of view so that we know everything. Whoever is doing the doctorate, so they know everything. And uh, BSc and MSc students or MSc level, we all already started to do research. So, but in this case, research in the terms means that how to conduct this virtual lab research. That, that is the, I mean, um, point here. So the described study in this uh, paper is meant based on monitoring of teachers participating in the IT Academy project during the pandemic situation. Like some IT Academy also uh, um, conducted some survey uh, here, uh, like uh, two short questions were used first, uh, what that's uh, aiming at teachers and students. So the questions for teachers consider their approach to the, so how do you, how, how to approach the particular set of experiment and this in a virtual platform that the application of experiments during online lessons, their frequency of using of data logging services, their reasons for choosing the reported approach, and the pros and cons of carrying out experiment in this way. So that is a question for the teacher, and that the next question that is a survey for students, so regarding this virtual platform, whether they are satisfied fully with learning chemistry remotely, that the participation in the study is voluntary, and they were aware of the data to be collected, the goal of the collection, the mode of processing. 
So this uh, methodology that we have to follow, first we have to put a, like a whoever the course coordinator, they can give some um, students some uh, feedback of the lectures of the virtual lab because it's completely new. So these two questions are very important from an academic point of view. So these are different set of experiments uh, we shown in this um, paper from the Journal of Chemical Education. So this teacher actually, um, it's a kind of live demonstration in an empty classroom. So this is an empty classroom. So they are doing balancing and everything, volumetric estimation and all this type of sort of experiment they are doing like a mass conservation involving a data logger. So data logger is a kind of automatic setup. So um, they will like automatically put the data logging into the system. And about one guy need to be there and he will uh, record it and share it. So that is like a, then we can just fulfill this COVID protocol. This is one of the way of doing experimentation, like as we discussed point by point. So many things are uh, is repeated here, but uh, this is good for like a understanding of uh, this presenter, myself, and as well as the teachers present here, the students, how these things are going on here around the world. So the live demonstration of an essential oil extraction process, like it is uh, clove oil, uh, how to extract it, uh, which is like a solvent and all these things. Then see this presentation of data recorded earlier. This is acid-based titration somebody is doing with a pH sensor and data logger. So data logger then will uh, plot this car, okay? Then investigation done by students at home, the influence of food additives on the properties of baked sweets. So as I mentioned, this food processing chemistry is very important. Even some universities like Duke universities, where I gave a lecture recently in China. So they have uh, proposed such type of food chemistry program, like an EDX platform also. Harvard is also proposing food chemistry. So what is the flavor of food? How this flavor form? What is the molecular understanding? That is a kind of fully graduate program. So this is all about this now, now how to know this effectiveness of virtual lab. So this, this effectiveness of the virtual lab that always comes from student side, whether it is effective or not, because our goal is to just teach students. Uh, so this, there have been studies comparing students' performance in hands-on and virtual laboratory courses. So student understanding was similar. So this, from this earlier two-question survey online, it was found that student understanding was similar. So like a, in a uh, physical experiment in the laboratory. So uh, they also save time and money. And like as I said, reduce chemical waste. But again, we have some problem here. Uh, that problem is that we cannot simulate all the experiments. Like in BAC chemistry major course, we have to do very difficult salt analysis, for instance. We have to do a lot of flam, um, flam, I mean, testing and a lot of uh, analytical-based testing all the time. And it's not easy to bring together everything for that we need really one year of planning how to go forward these experiments first well. But we are hoping for this. Uh, uh, let's see if this corona is over, then everything will come back in their own place. But right now, we for another one year, probably we have to go like this. So here, the last point is that both instructors and students were familiar with the situation that they are going to face and an alternative available. So this instructor, as I mentioned, that we have to first prepare everything, photos, videos, then we can go to students to teach this virtual laboratory. So then next, uh, this is another review paper. If somebody is interested, then they can go for it. That is called, I will not take a lot of time. I already half an hour, it's over. But uh, another five minutes, I'll wind up my lecture. Then we can go to real workshop team simulation of nanotechnology. So here, online delivery of teaching and laboratory practices. So here, uh, there are a lot of like a, Problem. I mean, what's going on uh, in around the world the, about this virtual lab based experiments? And um, they, they just compiled together in this review paper. Is somebody interested um, for their own perspective? If somebody is from um, like a, from another background, they can also study. Like arts background people, they can study uh, the how uh, these things are going on. Let us 
Um, like uh, here, they mentioned about this, they discuss these few points, like transformation from traditional to online delivery. So, yeah, and here, uh, the, like uh, the same situation, so how this online uh, delivery and the adaptation to this methodology is very important. So during, during this uh, COVID pandemic, so that we discuss the challenges of online delivery. So challenges I would like to talk a little bit about here, the developing experimental design, problem solving and analysis skills that needs really practice that we have to do many times repeatedly and developing practical skills, then developing communication and interpersonal skills, developing technical judgment and professional practice, then integrating theory and practice, the motivation students. So these are some challenges of online delivery like this virtual platform. The impact of assessment, so assessment is always very important, like uh, uh, we have to assess, like in multiple choice questions, we can give a spreadsheet to just solve these questions related to theory, then they have to, that whatever the experimental data, they have to just just with the theoretical understanding whether it is, um, they can able to solve the concept or not. So multiple choice question, an open book exam. These are some of the, some of the ways we, where we can, we can do this um, virtual lab assessment for students. So finally, lastly, uh, this is a paper, this chemistry teacher responses, uh, like uh, this is the many different way of teaching methodologies. So there they discuss some challenges and opportunities, challenges like we have mentioned already. So opportunities, students can actively looking. So it is like an, um, like if we do a lab-based experiment, they have to get uh, together, but here in a, a one, Part of advantage is that at an individual level of learning, they will be able to better understand gaps the concept. Okay, so this with this, I think uh, we can go to the simulation part of today's workshop. I mean, to this lecture, um, PPT will be over now. So simulated lab, lab, we have discussed a lot of virtual lab, virtual lab, but who is developing that uh, software? So Labster is one of the company who is developing such kind of softwares, like here you can see they developed the whole UVB setup, then pipette, then conical flux, then all the dustbin setup, then balance. So everything like we can do it online. But the but thing is that we cannot, uh, we cannot do it so quickly. Uh, for that, for that we need to uh, purchase this software that is a cost, it is, from, it is not cost effective. So that's why this uh, like a photo based, like a video, we can do some mobile based videos and upload it. Uh, like that, uh, somebody will do, the instructor will do everything, we'll record it and we'll upload it. Then they can practice it, uh, like uh, when the lab will be open, but this going to the software, is saying that they, do they donated $5 million worth of services, like a $5 million worth of services, this lab star have done, to K-12 and college and university instructor. So university instructor will show them in a like a, um, like I'm going to show that free software that uh, what I for today. So with this, I like to uh, this conclude this lecture. Now I'll go to my next part of uh, that is software. There is a software, can you able to see this uh, screen? Hello? Yeah, it's PPT yes. it's, it's only. Yeah, uh, it is visible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's visible. Sorry? Now. Yeah, it's visible now, model li library, right? Yeah, model library, yes. Yeah, yeah. So okay. th this is a software uh, uh, that I'm going to be there a lot, uh, like uh, students can download it uh, with this link. Uh, they can make a snapshot of my screen, or otherwise I'll share it to Pinut uh, uh, Hajarika, sir. There's a link, uh, then... Uh, he can share to his students uh, uh, how to download it. And it is for Mac platform I'm downloading, but Windows also we have. So to the, so for instance, here, uh, now let us start now. So this is like a physics-based teachers can also do some simulation here, biology, like a molecular biology model, protein. Then 
are today sticking to nanotechnology, also many things of nano fabrication machine, and that is because I'm fully master and PhD in nano. So chemistry is my, I have an honors, in, I'm a major in chemistry, so I will always like to start with chemistry first. Let us start with states of matter. So now I hope students can able to see it. So this is a gas of carbon dioxide. So first, how to run this simulation? So we will simulate it here, just run it. And this is a carbon dioxide molecule in a, like a gas stream. So how they actually vibrating, yeah? And on like a Brownian motion and all these things. So you can simulate it like this. This is a very simple simulation. So we are talking about simulation, simulation, lot of times, but what is that basically? So this is a carbon dioxide molecule in a stream of gas, okay? That is all about carbon dioxide molecule in a gaseous state. Let us go to the next part. Just give me some time. Is getting hang again. Then uh, we can see some other type of experiments. For instance, the role of attractive forces on the formation of a nanoparticle. So since we are going to show a lot of uh, simulations for nano stuff, so let us start with this basic chemistry part. So what is the basically force involved in the formation of a nanoparticle? So in this activity, the temperature, that is the kinetic energy of the particle. So this kinetic energy of the particle, um, because this nanopart this nanoparticle is nothing but, if you cut your hair into 80,000 pieces, then one part will be like a nano. So one nanometer equal to, so one, um, uh, so nano means, so if you take one nanometer, it will be like a 10 angstrom. If you bring up 10 atoms together, then it will make a one nanometer dimension. So now we are talking about nanoparticles. So nanoparticle is nothing but a cluster of atom. So it is basically one to 10 nanometer. So one nanometer equal to 10 power minus nine meter and one angstrom 10 power minus 10 meter. So 10 power minus 10, 10 power minus uh, nine. So we can get around uh, this uh, like a 10 angstrom here. So the one nanometer equal to 10 angstrom that is 10 atoms will be combined together. But in this simulation, what happens here so a lot of atoms are bringing together. This is a kind of hexagonal nanoparticles that we are going to uh, simulate now. So, but there are some forces involved here. This is very complex technique. This is nanotechnology is nothing uh, like only chemistry. You have to understand physics fully, quantum mechanics fully, quantum chemistry, colloid chemistry fully. Then uh, a lot of things we have to understand here. But uh, it is like a virtual lab workshop, so I cannot show everything, but to the best of my knowledge, so whatever time will allow me, I'll go like a step by step. First we saw the carbon dioxide molecule. So that is a molecule. Now we come to an atom. So atom and molecule, so that is a carbon atom, oxygen atom there. So, but here we are, it is a kind of a germanium nano crystal. So this is a germanium atom cluster, for instance. So with or without attraction forces, in the presence of attraction forces, if you have an attraction, there's a called Van der Waal forces of attraction. They can, there's a kind of weak forces there, or strong forces sometimes. So the kinetic energy is mainly the vibrational energy of particles. So in the potential well formed by the attractive force. So the potential well, these concepts, I'm not going to discuss for this is for like a BSc student is too high, right? But what we are doing, just we are increasing the kinetic energy of the particle. And if we increase the temperature here, like a 2000 Kelvin, then I simulate it. See, so now it will like a vibrating like tremendously, haphazardly. So if I decrease the temperature to around here, then your kinetic energy is going down. You can see here, kinetic energy of power particle will be going down. Then they are agglomerating together. Okay, so then next, if it's let us take a low temperature, see vibration is very low. If we go to a high temperature, like uh, here students may have the misconception that particles without attracting forces are hotter because their motion appears to be more significant. So 
particles, whatever we have with this, without this attraction forces, it, it is not like a hotter. So we, we, when you heat up this set of atoms together, uh, like at a low temperature, then assembly will be good. Like what we are making, this called quantum dot. So quantum dot, we can, if you, we have a machine called transmission electron microscope. So where we can see is individual nanoparticle. But uh, maybe it's in some next time of seminar, I can show you real and experimental data about how this nanoparticle look like. But today is just a virtual lab. So now if you increase intermediate temperature again, see, they are just going again, uh, just a haphazardly, they are vibrating and just is going. So that means we have to control the temperature and to form a well perfect nanoparticle. Okay, <coughs> so like that you can simulate it and uh, this is called qu compute quantum dynamics and then their crystallography. Um, is a lot of things are there. So you can, under extra diffraction pattern also you can do it of these uh, particles, for instance, here, going to here. Um, then speed distribution, velocity, this pair correlation, those are very advanced things. So X-ray crystallography actually tell us about the crystal structure of this atom. So the crystal structure is very important to understand its properties. So that's a one type of experiments. So you can, this is an analysis option. Then there are compute quantum dynamics. That is a bit uh, complex things, I think. So that is, uh, it's not available probably. All right. So like this, uh, this is the basic things. First you have to understand, now going back again. So you got to do like a slow vibration. So this is all about the attractive forces. The Van der Waals forces will be influenced by the temperature and the particles will be like a not combining together at a high temperature. That's why we are always reluctant to go for high temperature. Sorry for this drilling machine. Uh, I cannot help here. So let us go to some real nanotechnology things, how simulation work. But you can go a lot of other like a, other simulations like what is a plasma, then nucleation of water vapor with dust particle. So the, uh, how this nucleation water vapor happens, if you have a dust particle, carbon dust for instance, how will be water vapor will be nucleate? So we have to go for a low to medium for instance, run it. Then it will be nucleated, the water molecule will be nucleated like this. So a dust particle, we are adding this dust particle now. So temperature is a bit of increasing. So it is like they are nucleating on top of this dust particle. So that is another type of simulation you can perform at home. So. That is a course, uh, a lot of nanotech courses are there. Um, in Dibuga University, I think they have now my MSc program, probably. So then if you want to study that, uh, those type of things, we have to first understand what is the nucleation things. So nucleation, you know, think about there is a, like a island, uh, there's a, like a mother particle. There's a point of dust particle. These all things will come together and forming a nanoparticle like in earlier classes, but that is a single case. That is a crystal growth phenomenon that we have shown. Um, okay. Now this uh, for how uh, atomic mass and melting point, then uh, those type of chemistry things you can do it. Then uh, there is also like a reaction of chemical kinetics. Chemical kinetics, how chemical reaction happen. Like uh, here, elementary reactions and pathways they have proposed. So this is just a, like a uh, interactive session. This is not a simulation. So we will go to directly to uh, collision theory of chemical reactions. So what is collision theory? You read it probably in your book. So just run this simulation here. So this is a kind of a collision, then forming bone breaking and bone formation, bone breaking and bone formation happens. 
So how this uh, reaction happens basically, reactants are reacting together and forming a new bones. Uh, that is one of the um, simple simulation you can perform. That how a chemistry reaction happens. So uh, basically you just put it up and this way uh, we can understand, yeah? For instance, this is a reaction of sulfur dioxide with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide molecule. There is a two kind of reactions, forward reaction and reverse reaction. So run. So this is this, um, sulfur dioxide. This is a red one is oxygen molecule. So it's a for taking one oxygen atom and forming sulfur trioxide. So that is like a this type we can able to understand. So this is a free oxygen atom. So this is oxygen, uh, two atoms are there forming oxygen molecules. So all together they are making now uh, all the sulfur trioxide molecule. So reverse reaction, what happened to that? So reverse is an equilibrium reaction, so the reversible reaction. So it is a two SO2 form plus oxygen. So that is one of the reactions we can um, understand how it happens, okay? This is basically for high secondary practicals uh, or but BSC, I mean, if they want to understand like advanced thing, then role of free radicals in chain reactions. So this is one of the uh, re reactions that is from, for making polymers, like polystyrene polymer. So if you want to make these polymers, then uh, uh, there are two models. If we increase the temperature, decrease it, how it happens. So here, so free radicals, and you will most likely not see a single reaction for a long time. However, if free radical is added, like in the model, in the, this is a here G, uh, model, you can see same reactions go on. So without the presence of free radicals, there is no reaction, there will be no polymerization. Polymerization is a, like a common reaction to make polymers. Polymers are used for day-to-day -day purpose, you know already, plastic-like things that we can make. Polystyrene, uh, uh, this, uh, this is like a critical based polymer, it's like a same transfer reaction, so many things which can happen. So now this uses add these three radicals, then it will be combined together. So if we just to making it together, then there'll be like a polymerization reaction will happen. But if we, like a here see, zero, one, two, three, four, but here with the presence of zero, one, two, three, four, so if we put a free radical, then like a, uh, it's like a step-by-step -step reactions happen and forming the polystyrene molecule. So that is one of the simulations you can try at home. Now, uh, hydration and hydrogenation reaction. So this is the organic reaction. So this is the uh, like a hydration and hydrogenation, so how it happens. So it's just making this uh, uh, ethylene molecule plus water, making this ethylene oxide. Uh, this, uh, I'm not an organic chemistry expert, but uh, this is the, just a, a simulation things you can perform. Similarly, you can uh, um, understand some other type of reaction because in organic chemistry, there are a lot of softwares available. So if we, for organic reactions, we don't have a problem to understand because in the book itself, a lot of software has come nowadays. So that is one of the all about chemistry part. Let us go next 25 minutes about nanotechnology things. And there is also another part I would like to show it, sorry. So this is the like a home page of this. Uh, and it's not for only for chemistry. Um, it is for like a diffusion, we can cellular respirations, uh, many things we can plasma, we can understand, and quantum mechanics we can understand. It is a very good site. I recommend to any chemistry, um, this major students to go, and physics students also go for this. Like uh, this is, um, okay, uh, this is uh, STM experiment. STM is a, is a machine to see the atoms in nanotechnology. That's why I like to show this machine and how it works. So first, uh, uh, individual atom manipulation. So we can actually manipulate the atoms here. If you want to make a, like a write it something. So that is a kind of simulations. I hope it will work.
So if this is a tip, I'm moving down. This tip will come here. So this touching this atom, just move left, move right. I'm bringing it together with this tip to the next atom. So such type of uh, experiments you can do. This is a nanotechnology based experiment. This was first invented in Zurich and where I stayed for last seven years. So there is a laboratory, IBM lab, Zurich IBM laboratory. They got uh, this, uh, this Eigler and Bini Eigler. They got the Nobel Prize for developing this machine where we can manipulate individual atom. So I'm making it together, this atom. Now I'll move up, the, uh, move up this atom. Okay, then move left, move right. So move right. I'll put it here now, I'll release it, the atom. Just release it. Then in that way you can play with this manipulating atoms with an STM tip. So this is very advanced things. This is very hi-fi things. But for me, it's the old and normal things. But for very beginner, uh, it's very advanced. Like with what we are doing, like in the forefront of science. So these things are available uh, with this software. So you can, uh, then we have to understand here, like a theory, like as I mentioned in my earlier, lecture that how this tunneling effect works scanning the surface two modes of operations the tunneling effect is the main physical principle here so tunneling effect is uh, this is our normally we are taking a substrate so and there we apply an elect uh, this is the electric field will be generated so this electrons will tunnel and then we have an a, like an internal electric field will develop and that electric field will attract these atoms together and we can manipulate the atoms. So to see an atom is to detect a signal from it. So STM uses a needle-like probe, so that is called scanning tunneling microscope. That has only one atom at the tip, that is atomically sharp. That is that, uh, so here, this, the tip is placed above a sample and then we apply electrical bias Suppose two volts, like little, little bias we can apply between this tip and our substrate, then this, uh, there the field will be generated. And then, like this, one of the important phenomenon will occur that is called tunneling effect. So, this is called, that is called, that's why it is called scanning tunneling microscopy. So, now uh, we have to just self evaluate. So, if you have this, read sometime, uh, the students will study nanotechnology in the near future, they can uh, able to run this experiment um, by understanding purpose, and this is uh, available, this software. Just you have to log in uh, with your email ID. Uh, this is a, there are like a level, college level things, but for research level, we have a lot of advanced things here. So I don't want to show you because everywhere, it will be like a, um, a headache for everybody. So that's why. Okay, we can also like a molecular dynamics simulation that I have shown you, like carbon dioxide. The light matter interaction, that is protein synthesis, we can also study. So let us go to now this nanotechnology thing. So here we can browse it. So nanofabrication and machinery. So I would like to show you a fast nanostructure, nanofabrication and hypo. Whatever the things available here, I'll try to show in my next 19 minutes. I have only 19 minutes left. So, so this nanobat is a kind of nanobat. Nanobat, you know, the flower bud. So here, what happens? This is the picture of it. Like as mentioned, it's called scan transmission electron microscope. This is so high resolution, highly powerful microscope. Maybe teachers, uh, physics teachers and chemistry teachers knows about it. Whoever doing PhD in university level, they knows. A student, this is a picture of a carbon nanotube, which is very tough, or toughest thing. which is like an allotrope of graphite, carbon-based material, but carbon allotrope graphite is there, but diamond is there, 
and these are like a, some kind of advanced allotropic features like now graphene comes a lot of things um, been well developed here this carbon nanotube is very big hype during when i did my master in 2005 in Tesco university so here what they do do actually they um, actually when you they synthesize it they found some dot like structure uh, this is called like a budding flower budding okay from carbon nanotube that's why i call this called nanobud let us simulate this now so how it look like so this is a simulation so in this simulation you can spin it so how it, uh, but here is a like a 2D format. So 3D format, I like to see how it's bonding and everything, yeah? So you can just also manipulate it uh, like with your mouse cursor. So this is the fullerene, this is the carbon nanotube. So here you have also defined, like I also defined, I mean this, Simulation have other visualized other like a sodium chloride structure if you want to visualize This is a sodium chloride structure that you read it in your uh, inorganic chemistry basics That rubidium chloride lithium chloride structure So the, this all kind of like ionic bonding and all these things you can study here Then in our guess like it is an FCC crystal how this FCC crystal look like so different type of crystals Ionic crystal, metals, the nickel, gold, copper, then some alloy, how this alloy look like. So this is an alloy material, alloy based material. So these are, are some of the first um, ex ex example of this, um, I mean, of this nanobot. So let us uh, go to the next part. A nanocar made of nanotubes. Even people are making car-like molecule. So they have a, like a substrate. They deposited carbon nanotube on top of it. And then it's simulated. If this, you see, this is a, uh, like a car-like, like a Formula One car. So there are four wheels. This is all made of nanotubes. So spins, if you do spinning, you can see this is a substrate and um, top of it it's uh, like a carbon nanotube it's a car called carbon nanocar so unlike buckyball nanocar buckyball is called fullerene this is a 60 carbon atom together the 360 that is called fullerene so this buckyball and uh, this is called carbon nanotube cn okay so here uh the chemist can immediately point out that the axis have long bones that are physically impossible. So nanocar could be more mechanically stable so than the buckyball. So this is extremely stable. So if you, it's a kind of a molecular machines, which is used for very tiny, tiny purposes. Uh, this is it's a, like a, it's a, like a theoretical concept, but practically I'm not sure whether they have done, these are done at Rice University by Professor Jam Store Group. Okay, so let us go to the next uh, simulation. Now, a nanocar made of buckyballs. That is, either earlier one is for a nanotube. So now it is called buckyball on gold surface. This yellow is a gold metal that we are weighing gold. That is a gold atom. So we have a gold substrate on top of this. These are deposited. So here you can tune it, the energy. And you can able to see how it is molecular fluctuation happens. So you can just go ahead like this. So that is one of the example of a buckyball car. This is a Professor Toe group at Rice University. So it has a, uh, I will bring my skin like here, then you can understand. This above model of a nanocar was quickly sketched without in-depth consideration in chemistry. Uh, uh, this is a model, uh, they have some criticized this model in the sense that this carbon hydrogen atom is missing here. That is, uh, it is a four buckyball molecules as the wheels and some carbon molecule as the axle, axis. So, axis, like a car, you have an axle. 
it can run molecular dynamics. So whatever simulation we are doing, it is called molecular dynamics simulation. Uh, but these simulations, we have to code it. That is called Monte Carlo simulation is there also. That's physics based nowadays. We have software available to design this kind of simulations. So, but uh, this is like an user platform, but uh, you cannot design your own simulation here, but it is just a pictorial representation of what you are going to study. Now there's another simulation called arrays of water molecule through a cluster of carbon nanotube. So this is a graphene novel laureate uh, that is under guy in the University of Manchester. He recently discovered some graphene-based nanopore, which is very small, tiny, one nanometer space where this water molecule pass through. So this water molecule will go through here and it will just say how they are like uh, moving inside this like a, you have a whole pipe to your garden or like a plumbing pipe to the kitchen how this water molecule come the same at the molecular level so how this water molecule will, uh, will like a uh, race to just uh, some water is coming out but some is inside inside we can contain it like a confine it so that, that is a spin mode we can study also Yes, so that's all about this. So this about this model has, actually we have to put 998 atoms. Just two atoms under the current limit, we said 1000. So it has 1342 radial bones, 2386 angular bones, and 910 torsional bones. So all these bones and all these things we can design in a cam draw and then put it together, all these things in the simulation. So that's uh, basically uh, some kind of virtual lab experiments we can perform, uh, like uh, in an online platform like this, yeah. So next is the water molecules in a nanotube, and uh, the cluster of nanotube we discussed. So absorption of a nanotube on gold surface. So when you deposit the how nanotube absorb on gold surface, that is uh, basically it's shown here. So how the gold atom interact with carbon atom, um, carbon hydro, um, hydrogen atom. So uh, this uh, carbon nanotube use you have some hydrogen atom also. So this white one. So this um, is like a interaction happens here. Also some hydroxyl bonding also occurs because water vapor. So this adsorption happens, uh, that is the first part of like a deposition reaction. Uh, so this nanotube gets absorbed onto a gold surface. The temperature is maintained at 300 Kelvin. Note that this simulation costs a lot of calculations and may run very slowly if you have an old computer. So yes, you need to have a lot of memory to run this type of calculation. I In my system, I have a 20 gigabyte, 16 gigabyte RAM. So it is automatically running, but some system it will have difficult to run it. If you have a 2 GB, 3 GB RAM, it will not. Because you see, this is calculations. So a lot of Monte Carlo simulations, calculations are performed to get finally did these simulations. All right, so let us discuss another. I have 10 minutes left, then we can go to another one. That is a collision between a Xenon atom and a buckyball. That is again fullerene. So you just run it. So what happens if you Janon atom and this fullerene combine together, I mean collide each other? So how it actually vibrating back and forth, that is being shown here, okay? Also you have an option like ball and stick model. You have a space filling is like this, but this is a ball and stick. So this is a, like a, a C60 molecule. There's a 60 carbon atoms are there. Uh, like in a benzene ring, if you have it like combined together. So this is uh, like uh, they are all doing all these things. Okay, wireframe, uh, then stick model like this. You can just choose your own options here. Then spin it, that's all. Then you can then again, it will combine and collide with and how you jump back. So this is the pathway of this, um, I mean, this kinetic energy setting mode is selected for the above resolution uh, simulation. So here the mass of buckyball is 720 gram per mole. The mass of Janon is 100, molecular mass of Janon is 131. 
So based on this molecular weight, so how this this bot, this atom, xenon atom, and this back cable just strike each other, okay? So let us go to another fabrication technique now. So how we actually make this nano particles, nano device? For that we have called atomic layer chemical vapor deposition. We call it as an atomic ALD, atomic layer deposition. So what we do, we have taken a substrate like gold substrate or whatever kind of substrate you need. This is called physical vapor deposition methodology. So all these techniques are, if you sometimes visit uh, IIT Guwahati, then Tezpur University, you can able to say, see this kind of machines. Also in RL Johat also they have probably some deposition set up in metal science division. You can have a look sometime if they allow. So uh, with your teachers, so basically, but this is a simulations that we have we can run here. So the subset temperature we, we, we can increase the hot. First we add, add a Picasso here. That is Picasso A. Normally, in our case, we deposit some iron oxide nanomaterial. What do we do? We take some iron pentacarbonyl solution and we pressure, I mean, put it in a like a hot plate. And then some Picassos you can also put there to control the shape of the nanoparticle. So this combined together and you can uh, go down or exhaust extra Picassos. So some Picassos you just don't need it, you exhaust it. And this is the and this is the simulation basically. So how you make this all kind of carbon nanotube deposition, buckyball deposition, gold nanoparticle you make also deposit on platinum substrate. So a lot of things are possible. So this is the simulation how it happens. So this actually CBD is a chemical process for depositing thin films. So we are making thin films like a solar panel. So that is another process for uh, making this, uh, that is with this device we can make. So thin films are base metal on the surface of solid substrate from sources of gaseous molecule. So you will play with a simulation of ALD technique with a CVD process in which two complementary Picasso, this is trimethyl aluminum and water alternatively introduced into the reaction chamber. So one of the Picasso will absorb onto the substrate surface the Picasso absorb until it saturates the surface and further growth cannot occur until the second Picasso is introduced. Does so the thin film thickness, we can control it. We can form a very tiny thickness thin film, all right? I know it's difficult to understand, but it's just a glimpse. Um, you just try at home, okay? This is again, the software name is Molecular Workbench. This is a self-assembly. Self-assembly is very well-known concept, like a living cell, like a part of a human from a living cell. So how a, a baby developed. Basically, that is a self-assembly, if you can talk about. So self-assembly also, like a crystallization, mineralization, everything is self-assembly, like a uh, snail's uh, surface. Hamuko kulato jitu. Hamuko kulato to biomineralization hata. So biomineralization is kind of a self-assembly phenomenon. So this is also you can run it slowly and heat it, cool it. So like all this DNA material that we have in our cell, everything is made by self-assembly, by nature. So nature you heat it up, then cooling down because art was earlier very hot, but during the formation of this uh, like a solar system. So this, uh, that's why uh, this heating cooling process make this self assembly. This is purely natural phenomenon. Okay. So lastly, I uh, last two simulation I'd like to show you about some nano machines. Okay, people are so much hype about some time that they, uh, they make some gear also nano gear. So nano gear is best. How this gear system works in your bike? Basically, that is that is a mechanical engineering, that is a bar thing. But nanotechnologists, like molecular nanotechnologists, they are making it very tiny. They are making a very tiny car, like you, if you see the movie Ant, Ant Man. So this uh, this is basically some of the Hollywood based movies, um, like a, a dream to apply. But they have made it. 
when somebody uh, how this nano gear work how this stock system apply so this is two um, so there are some different type of molecular nano machines but i cannot explain it like uh, here in this workshop but this is just uh, for your pan purpose i'm showing you uh, with this okay All right. I hope uh, uh, everything is uh, still visible. Yes, yes. Thank you. All right, then I hope you <laughs> enjoyed all the faculties of Central College and uh, yeah, the atten attendees and the students. Uh, it's a bit of a lot of disturbance in between. I apologize for it. Um, but we can come up in future with some real, my own research topic and then experimental things. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending my lectures and this simulation workshop. And I'd like to thank you, Binod uh, Hazarika Sar, for inviting me to give this talk because we are like a childhood friend from RRL. We've grown up together. So it is like a really nice workshop and give, give me also like a lot of dreams to deal with my own students. And um, i like to announce here that I'll also, I mean, move over to Abroad again because I um, choose a faculty position in abroad. So uh, I'll soon move to another country, So, but we can keep in touch. Thank you very much, sir. OK, Thank you. bye, it's, bye. Re it's really a nice, to, nice pleasure to listen to you. Thank you. Going there, ma'am? Yes, yes. Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir, for your fruitful and informative presentation. Hope it will be highly beneficial for all the participants. In his presentation, he has mentioned various advanced software available. Some of them are downloaded freely and some are costly. He has also highlighted various simulations programs for different chemical sciences practical which can be performed virtually. He has also covered various, various facets of experimental study from higher secondary courses to PG courses and also in the level of PhD level and also in the PhD level. Since he is a nanotechnologist, he has discussed various application of nanotechnology. But thank you very much once again. We are looking forward, sir, for your kind cooperation in near, near future as when it is needed. Thank you, sir, and best of luck for your new assignment. Thank you very much, ma'am. I highly appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. It is now uh, over to Ilifukon, ma'am. Ilifukon, ma'am, ma'am, are you there? Any ma'am? Are you there? Yes. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Devo Sir. And uh, ma'am Purnita. Uh, thank you. Now, moving on to the next part, we have the English lab that will be taken care of by Dr. Arunima Bora, ma'am, Pranjal Dr. Sir, Ratnamuni Dr. Ma'am, and Parthana Bordoloi. All the four faculty members of uh, English Department of Jorhat Kendriya Mahavidyalaya. Over to Dr. Arunima Bora. Arunima Bora, ma'am, are you there? Dr. Arunima Bora, can you right, hear right. me? Right, right. Ma'am, I'm, I'm there very much. Thank you so much for yes, introducing. Yes, you and, yes. and your faculty members can proceed now. Uh, over to yes. you. Over to you. Ma'am. Okay, uh, a very warm welcome to the post post lunch session, shall we say, the fifth day of a national level one week familiarization workshop on remote access to lab, lab on a screen. 
we are four of us here, Pranjal Dutta, Ratnamani Dutta, Parthana Bortoloi, and myself, Arunima Bora, and we shall be coordinating together for a demo on listening skill. So as we have been well acquainted to the sessions of this workshop, a lab is a place where we can experiment, practice, and learn practically. What we are taught in theory classes are practiced in the lab and provides hands-on experience. The language lab is a place where we can learn languages. Just the way that we have tools, equipment, chemicals, specimens in our science labs, in a language lab we have a number of tools which teach us and guide us to learn and practice language. For attaining proficiency in any language, one requires constant listening, speaking, and practice. A language lab is the software, actually, which enhances the required skills for learning a language. Few colleges have installed such language labs, and in our college, too, we have one. So language labs are also available online for purchase. Five best online language labs are Babel, Fluent2, Memrise, and Duolingo, and there are many more. But here, we are not concerned with the language lab simply, but with a virtual language lab that comes free of cost and are easily accessible to students, such as lang such language labs, interestingly, can also be created. Virtual language labs offer students a structured e-learning environment that is successful and reliable. The language lab is a very useful tool that facilitates classroom engagement and interaction via computer-based exercises and activities to maximize language immersion. These labs provide a very different experience from the traditional teaching and learning languages. They offer more advanced features and functionalities. It is an approach to teaching English as a skill. A virtual language lab creates an intelligent computer-assisted language learning environment. For those interested in learning grammar, because here our appeal is especially to the students here, uh, those uh, interested in learning grammar online can use OLAB, which is a useful online lab designed by Amrita Vishwa Vidyabitham, where along with subjects like physics, chemistry, biology, and mathematics, they have labs for creating uh, and learning, for learning, I'm sorry, grammar and comprehension skills. A virtual language lab, we have found for our purpose today, particularly useful is the Sakshat Virtual Lab initiated by IIT Guwahati. The website provides an array of practices in English communication. They have titled it as Virtual English and Communication. We know that listening, speaking, reading, and writing are the four skills which play an important role in the acquisition of language and learning. In this session, we shall concentrate on listening. Listening is an important language skill and yet the most neglected skill in our classroom. It is neglected not because we do not recognize the importance of listening, but because we take it for granted that learners automatically acquire the skill without any special training. As teachers, we think we give them enough practice in listening in our classrooms through our expository methods of teaching. But I'm afraid the matter is not as simple as that. Listening involves a lot many things, as we shall soon find out uh, in the process of this workshop by doing certain intensive listening exercises. We shall listen to a few audios, two taken from the virtual lab of IIT Guwahati and three compiled by ourselves from the Department of English, Johar Kendriya Mahavidyalai. I would like you all, and especially the students, to please listen to the audios carefully and try to answer the set of questions that come after. I hope you all find it interesting as we have uh, found it very interesting in compiling these um, audios. Now I'll need to share my screen.
Kathy, you can see my screen now? Yes. Yes, yes, ma'am. Yeah, okay. So this is the uh, virtual lab that uh, we were talking about, Sakshat Virtual Lab from Indian Institute of Technology, Gohati. And today we will be doing, uh, this is the home page. I'd just like to show you the array, the features that they have here. They have interesting features which are useful for students. They have, uh, virtual lab sessions on business communication, common errors in English, communication skills, grammar, technical communication, vocabulary, reading and comprehension, and listening skills. And they also have video tutorials which, you know, improve uh, your speaking skills and improve your vocabulary, conversational skills, etc. Now we shall go to listening skills. Students, uh, those who are interested may go to this website. I will give you, I'll share the link and you can go to this website by yourself and try out practice by yourself and test yourself. Because the more you practice, the more you, know, you become clear. Okay, first, of course, we shall listen to the audio. Here is the audio. Please listen carefully because there will be a set of questions I would like you all to uh, answer. Please listen. It is an intensive listening practice, so you will need to focus on your listening. It's not just a casual listening process, focused and intensive, so you need to listen really carefully. Your best wishes to you all. to the routine life of the mission compound. They allowed her to skip the kindergarten. The teachers were intensely interested in her, both on account of her story and her natural lovableness. She was a charming storyteller and sang beautifully. Before long, she was the most popular girl in school. She admired her teacher, Prabhat Baito, very much. Prabhat was a Christian. She taught the children about Jesus Guru. All he stood for and his loving life and sacrifice. She inspired in her peoples a deep reverence for the Christ. She taught them to speak with him even though he is God. A picture of him hung in the classroom where the bright brown eyes could linger on it. Nirupama spent a great deal of time gazing upon it. About the Guru stood a group of children of many races. In the Guru's arms was a little Indian girl in a red sari. The Guru reminded her of her own daddy. Her uncle and brothers delayed their coming. Nirupama wondered why they did not come, but she made excuses for them. There was the work on the farm to keep them busy. They probably knew that she was in good hands and did not worry about her. They might have come at the Durga Puja, but probably they were too Nirupama was leading a busy and useful life, learning much from books but vastly more by contagion. In school, she was forging ahead. At the end of six months, she had reached the third grade. She learned to cooperate more gracefully in all the varied work of the compound. Learned, too, that being a Brahmin was not an excuse for partiality and that no work could possibly degrade her unless she went about in it, a spirit. So that was the audio. Now let us see how well we have listened to the audio. So our Pranjal Dr. Sir here will be asking you the questions and let's see how well we can understand it. This is just a testing uh, way we are testing ourselves about your about our listening capability. How well can we listen and how to improve our listening? Okay, good evening to all of you. 
Uh, I hope that all of you have listened to the paragraph uh, very properly. And now I'm going to ask you some questions. And there will be some, you can say, options like A, B, C, and D. Uh, so you have to, you can say, answer uh, the right one. So let's uh, go to the first one. The first question is, Nirubama was allowed to skip her A, classes, B, school, C, kindergarten, D, nothing. Now, which one is the correct answer? Kindergarten. Right. Right. Let's see whether yes. it's correct or not. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. No, it's not correct. You try once again. Try once again. Try it. Okay. Just wait a minute. Yes, that's the correct answer. Yeah. That's the correct answer. So let, let us go to the next question. Can you also see the screen? Yes, yes, it's visible. I think you all can see the screen, yes. Yes, and the second question is, who were intensely interested in her, both for her story and her loveliness? A, the teachers, B, her parents, C, the neighbors, D, none. Now, what is your choice? A, B, C, or D? A, the teachers, B, her parents, C, the neighbors, D, none. Yes. Students. Can you hear me, students? Hello? Yes, Am sir, I audible? Yes, exactly. You yeah. are audible. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. Well, what, what's the answer now? Parents. Yes, we didn't get you. Parents, he's parents. Our parents. Option B, I think. Parents. Parents, yes, sir. Yeah. Parents. 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 Let's lock it. So. That's not correct. So it's not correct. Any other guess? That the teachers. 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 The teachers. That's the correct answer. Yes. Your score is so far 83%. Eight, yeah. The score is 83%. So the correct answer is the teachers. The next one, let's move to the next, next question. Nirupama admired the teacher. A. Pravat Vaidu. B. Pratap. C. Shalini Vaidu. D. Tapanda. Option A. Which one is Pravat Vaidu. A. Pravat Vaidu. B. Pratap. C. Shalini Vaidu. D. Tapanda. No, we, we, don't get, uh, we are not getting much time. It's Prabhat Baidu. Okay, which one is the answer? There are some disturbance, disturbances actually online. Is it? No, someone was unmuted. Yeah. I think some, someone is uh, unmuting 
ease of our fall. Yes, what's the answer? Prabhat by the Prabhat by the Yes. 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 That is correct. Prabhat by the Yes, that is correct. Prabhat by the is correct. Next move to let's let us move to the next question. Nirupama spent a great deal of time gazing upon her teacher, the school, the picture of Jesus, none of the above. Question number four, Nirupama spent a great deal of time gazing upon her teacher, the school, the picture of Jesus, none of the above. A B, C, what is it? Yeah, I didn't get you, please repeat. So her teacher. Hello? Okay. Her, her teacher. Okay, we are locking a teacher. No, it's wrong. It's option C. Try to the, have one more. The picture of Jesus. Her teacher is not correct. The picture of Jesus. Option C. The, pic, the picture of Jesus. Yeah, that is correct. And your score is 83 percent. Uh, sorry, percent is that is question completed so far is four. Let's move to the next question. Who had delayed their coming? A, her parents. B, her uncle and brothers. C, her teachers. D, none of the above. Who had delayed their coming? A, her parents. B, her uncle and brothers. C, her teachers. D, none of the above. B, answer to. Uh, yes, what is the answer? B. 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 Uh, should I lock B? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm locking B. Yes, that is the correct answer. Our uncle and brothers. Yes, question number six. What work had kept Nirupama's uncle busy? A. Work at the office. B work at home c work on the firm d work in the town what is the answer work at the office work at the office okay we are locking the option a work at the office sorry you have to try again Answer B. Answer yeah. B. 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 Okay. okay, we are again locking B. Sorry, try again. It's wrong. There are no, two B. B. Answer is B. Work in the town. Working in the town. No. The only one left. Only one left. The, so let us lock that. C. Work on the firm. That is the correct answer. Work on the firm. Next. Nirupama was leading a busy life, learning much from her teacher, books, observing her uncle. Question number seven. Nirupama was leading a busy life, learning much from her teacher, books, observing her uncle. 
Yes, what's the answer? Observing. C, observing. observing. Okay, we are locking it. C is C is wrong. C is wrong. Answer B. Answer B. Answer D. Sorry. Books or books. 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 Correct. So books is the correct answer. Next one, question number eight. At the end of six months, Nirupama had reached the A, third grade, B, first grade, C, second grade, D, kindergarten. What is the option? A, B, C, and D. At the Target. end of... Third, third grade. Third grade. That that means you are going for the option A. Okay, I'm locking yes, it down. Sir. Yes, that is the correct answer. Good. It's the Thank you, sir. third grade. So question number nine. The other girls in the Hindu hostel were devotees of. The other girls in the Hindu hostel were devotees of A. Krishna, B. Shiva, C. Christ, D. None of the above. B. B. Are you just guessing it? Krishna. Yeah, what's the answer? Krishna. Krishna. Yes, that is the correct answer. It is Krishna. Yes, thank you. Good. So, last question. This is the last you, question. Uh, we will go to uh, some other paragraph again. Now, the last question. Nirupama was really a follower of A, Hindus, B, Christ, C, her teacher, D, none. Nirupama was really a follower of Hindus, Christ, a teacher, none. A, B, C, D. What is the answer? B. B. C. Oh. C. Yes. C. C answers C. Our teacher. Okay. okay. C. Sorry, it's not correct. This is not the correct answer. Into A. A. Sorry. Sorry. That is also wrong. Sir, Sir, number D, non. Okay. That is also wrong. Only one left. B. No, so left. that is the correct answer. B is the correct answer. So uh, while going through this exercise, what do we have found? That whenever we <laughs> hear something, we have to, you can say, hear it very, very, you can say, properly and try to understand it and if, if you just practice this you will you can say form the habit of understanding things very quickly and very properly okay now it's over to orima ma'am thank you yes, orima. thank you so uh, just as he has uh, sorry has pointed out we are sometimes uh, very unmindful when we listen Listening and hearing are two different things. We hear, but we fail to listen. To listen properly requires concentration. Right. So we will be doing exercises and moving from uh, the easier ones to a little difficult ones. And
and to try to concentrate more and get more correct answers. Now let's listen to an audio which we have compiled from the department. Uh, please listen in a focused manner, right? Intensely, so that you can correct more, uh, get more correct answers. Wikipedia says that a library is a collection of religions, books or media that are easily accessible for use and not just for display purposes. It is responsible for housing updated information in order to meet the user's needs on a daily basis. A conventional library has printed copies of books and periodicals, or CDs, cassettes, DVDs, etc. Years ago, people were happy with the experience of sitting and reading books in libraries. The journey would often start in a village library, then through school and college libraries, up until the libraries of higher institutions. Side by side, there is a library network like the district library, the state central library, the national library, etc. There are people I'm afraid uh, this was. Uh... Wikipedia says that the library is a collection of materials, books, or media that are easily accessible for use and not just for display purposes. I'm sorry, uh, let me give you another one. Okay, uh, let's just. It was the first photograph that I had ever seen, and it fascinated me. I can remember holding it at every angle in order to catch the flickering light from the oil lamp on the dresser. The man in the photograph was unsmiling, but his eyes were kind. I had never met him, but I felt that I knew him. One evening, when I was looking at the photograph, as I always did before I went to sleep, I noticed a shadow across the man's thin face. I moved the photograph so that the shadow lay perfectly around his hollow cheeks. How different he looked. At night, I could not sleep, thinking about the letter that I would write. First, I would tell him that I was 11 years old and that if he had a little girl my age, she could write to me instead of him. I knew that he was a very busy man. Then I would explain to him the real purpose of my letter. I would tell him how wonderful he looked with the shadow that I had seen across his photograph. And I would most carefully suggest that he grow whiskers. Four months later, when I met him at the train station near my home in Westfield, in New York, he was wearing a full beard. He was so much taller than I had imagined from my tiny photograph. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, I have no speech to make and no time to make it in. I appear before you that I may see you, that I may see you and that you may see me. Then he picked me right up and kissed me on both the cheeks. The whiskers scratched. Do you think I look better, my little friend? He asked me. My name is Grace Bedell, and the man in the photograph was Abraham Lincoln. Okay, uh, so could you hear it properly? Is any substance sorry? Any could you could you hear it properly? Hello. Would you hear yes, the audio properly? Could you hear? Would you like to hear yes, it once more, or is it okay? Are you ready? It's okay, ma'am. It's okay, na. So, uh, ready for the questions? All right. Someone tell one. Pardon? Someone tells one more, once more. So we'll go for the majority. Would you like to hear once more or uh, will it be okay if we go on to the questions? Yes?
पर्सनल जाओ ने हां मैम मैम जाब पारे जाब पारे बाय बाय the word flickering is closest in meaning to the options are here flickering the word flickering that occurred in the first three lines is closest in meaning to burning on steadily burning on steadily good is it raj pallav very good see correct answer well done you are already improving so at uh, the second question the little girl could not sleep because she was lonely she wanted his daughter to write to her she wanted him to grow a beard she wants him to visit her which is the correct one uh, number 2 she wanted his daughter to write to her let's see yes correct very good very good really we are so happy and now the next third question the man in the photograph was smiling had a beard had a round fat face looked kind which is the correct answer was smiling let's see no so had a beard No, no, no. Yes, yes. Looked kind. Okay. The man was face was unsmiling, but he looked kind. Okay. So this is the correct answer. Looked kind. Anyway, the first two words you answered quite quickly. So uh, let's move on. So what did the little girl do every night before she went to sleep? she wrote letters she looked at the photograph she made shadow figures on the wall she read stories what did she do she looked at the she photograph she looked at the photograph yes exactly exactly yes makes us so happy when you answer correctly right so the next one the photograph fascinated the little girl what does fascinated mean interested right yes good correct answer like to see yes see the screen one correct answer now who is the person in the photograph the president yes good can you name him abraham lincoln right very good very good we are successful in in this you see the second one they are definitely doing better than the first one So how many months did the little girl meet the man in the photograph it should have been man Okay it should have been man Okay after how many months did the girl meet the man in the photograph and four months right Good From the passage it may be inferred that Grace Bedell was the only one at the train station when Lincoln stopped at Westfield. Next option, there were many people waiting for Lincoln to arrive on the train. Next, Lincoln made a long speech at the train station at Westfield. Next, Lincoln was offended by the letter. Was uh, the number three, ma'am? Did he make a long speech at the train station? Number three. Number three. Think over. Lincoln made a long speech at the train station. Ah, uh, so there were many people waiting for Lincoln. Just imagine the speech that he made. How long was it? Ma'am B. Yes, there many people. B, B. Yes, Grace was not the only person. There were many people, but his speech was only. 
two, three lines long. So there were many people, yes, waiting for Lincoln. But he gave importance to the little girl, right? So uh, how did he greet her? How did Lincoln greet the little girl? It should have been girl, right? Just ignore this. How did Lincoln greet the little girl? He shook hands with her. He talked to her. He the little girl and kissed her. In third one. Yes, he picked up the little girl and kissed her, right? Are you happy with your answers? Are you happy with the passage? Yes, ma'am. Right, good. So why did the author wait until the last line to reveal the identity of the man in the photograph? Now this will require some thinking. Oh God, no. Please think, why did the author wait till the then, last line? Uh, the author wants to build the, uh, the curiosity of the reader. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you so much, Raj Pallav. I think I'm, I can recognize your voice. Uh, very well done. You have all done very well. Thank you so much. Then we shall move on to another one. Okay, now listen as intensely as you listened to this one. Let us uh, go to the audio. This is on a scientific... Uh, Thing. I mean, something to do with, anyway, you listen by yourself and decide. Listen carefully, okay? The biochemical elements essential for plant nutrition. Fertilizer is any substance that can be added to the soil to provide chemical elements essential for plant nutrition. Natural substances such as ethanol droppings and straw have been used as fertilizers for thousands of years and lime has also been used since the Romans introduced it during the empire. It was not until the 19th century, in fact, that chemical fertilizers became popular. Today, both natural and synthetic fertilizers are available in a variety of forms. A complete fertilizer is usually marked with a formula consisting of three numbers, such as 4 is to 8 is to 2 or 3 is to 6 is to 4, which designate the percentage content of nitrogen, phosphoric acid, and potash in the order state. Synthetic fertilizers are available in either solid or liquid form. Solids in the shape of chemical granules are popular because they are easy to store and apply. Recently, liquids have also shown an increase in popularity, accounting for about 20% of the nitrogen fertilizer used throughout the world. Formerly, powders were also used, but these were found to be less convenient than either solids or Fertilizers have no harmful effects on the soil, the crop, or the consumer as long as they are used according to recommendations based on the results of local research. Occasionally, however, farmers may use more fertilizers than necessary, damaging not only the crop but also the animals or humans that eat it. Accumulations of fertilizer in the water supply accelerate the growth of algae and consequently they disturb the natural cycle of life, contributing to the death of fish. Too much fertilizer on grass can cause digestive disorders in cattle and in infants with cow's milk. Okay, friends. I'm addressing the, uh, you know, our dear students present here uh, in the work workshop. So, um, are we done with the audio? Could you hear properly? I know you uh, couldn't have found it as exciting as the last one, but 
Are you ready to tackle the questions? Yes, ma'am. Yes, that is good. Uh, Parthana ma'am will be asking you these uh, set of questions. Parthana uh, Bordeloi. Hello? Yeah. Uh, ma'am, am I audible? Yes, you are. Very good, audible. Very much. Okay, let me start with the questions. Uh, with which of the following topics is the passage primarily concerned? The first option is local research and harmful effects of the fertilizer. Then the second option is advantages and disadvantages of liquid fertilizer. The third is a formula for the production of fertilizer. And the last one is content, form, and effects of fertilizer. Uh, are you sure? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ma'am, so yeah, they are saying the fourth one. Fourth one. Um, ma'am, I think you'll yeah. have to click. Yeah. Yes. Fourth one is the correct answer. Okay. Very good. good. Uh, the second one. The second question. In the formula, three is to six is to four. The nitrogen, uh, the content of nitrogen is greater than that of potash. The second option, the content of potash is greater than that of phosphoric acid. The third, the content of phosphoric acid is le less than that of nitrogen. And the fourth one, the content of content of nitrogen is less than that of the phosphoric acid. Any guess? If you remember from the passage. Your listening was focused, but looked like not so focused, not focused enough. Or make a guess? Ma'am. Second one. Yes. Second one. Let's see. Wow. No. But here is the correct answer. It is the last one. The content of nitrogen is less than that of phosphoric acid. Okay. Shall we move on, Parthana? Yes, ma'am. The third question. Which of the following has the smallest percentage of content in the formula? 4 is to 8 is to, to option A, nitrogen, option B, phosphorus, option C, acid, and the last option is potash. Any guess? Do you remember from the passage? Nitrogen? I think nitrogen. No, it's potash. It's potash. Anyway, don't be disheartened. I understand this was a little difficult passage. Okay, so let's move on. The fourth question. What is the percentage of nitrogen in a 5 is to 8 is to 7 formula fertilizer? Option A, 3%. Option B, 5%. Option C, 7%, and the last option, 8%. 8 8%? 5%. Five is correct. Five. Five is correct. Okay. okay. Yes, let's move on. The fifth question. The fifth question. Which of the following statements are statements about fertilizer is true? Option A, powders are more popular than ever. Option B, solids are difficult to store. Option C, liquids are increasing in popularity. 
Option D, chemical granules are difficult to apply. So, which one did you say? Liquid, sorry. Yes, learn. Good. Very good. What happens when? So, moving on to the sixth one. What happens when? Too much fertilizer is used. Option A, local research teams provide recommendations. Option B, algae in the water supplies begin to die. Option C, animals and humans may become ill. And the last option, crops have no harmful effects. Option 3, animals and humans may become ill. Yes, ma'am. Correct answer. Very good. The next. Question is the question popularized uh, fertilizers actually who popularized the fertilizers the question uh, is missing here I'm afraid so who popularized fertilizers that was the question it appeared in the very first uh, paragraph the answer appeared in that actually appears in the first paragraph of the passage that has been read out uh, I mean the audio provided can you remember the answer so anyway I'm telling you the answer that because the question is not there you get the benefit of doubt here so you get points anyway so the Romans actually popularized the idea of fertilizers during the empire okay so let's move on to the next question part one please uh, yes, let's read out the last question the eighth question in which century did chemical fertilizers become popular option a 18th century option b 17th century option c 15th century and the last option 19th century ma'am 19th century 19th century Although this passage was a little difficult, thank you very much, Parthana. Uh, Welcome, ma'am. You see, you were, uh, yes, you were able to tackle many of the questions. Now, um, so I'm sure you now know what uh, focused, you know, and intensive listening is all about, how well you need to listen. You know, and although even uh, the listening, no, we take it for granted actually when we hear like as we feel that all right we have heard it once we'll know how to answer but it is not always so now let's listen to another audio here wikipedia says that the library is a collection of materials books or media that are easily accessible for use and not just for display purposes it is responsible for housing update the information in order to meet the user's needs on a daily basis. A conventional library has printed copies of books and periodicals or CDs, cassettes, DVDs, etc. Years ago, people were happy with the experience of sitting and reading books in libraries. The 
the journey would often stand in the village library, the school and college libraries, up until the libraries of higher institutes. Side by side, there is a library network like the district library, the state central library, national library, etc. There are personal libraries too, but they vary from professional to professional. A lawyer, a teacher, a writer, a journalist, each one would have different types of books. But here a question may be raised. How many books must a person read in one's lifetime? The Brazilian writer, Paulo Coelho, feels that it should not be too many. He once decided to keep only 400 books in his library. He selected these titles for various reasons, some for sentimental reasons, some for rereading, etc. He is of the opinion that a book has its own journey to make. It should never be confined to a shelf. So, after reading a book, Paul Ho would give it to another reader or to a public library. While the history of libraries dates back to the Royal Library of the Ancient Kingdom of Ebla, which was discovered in 1974, some others opine that the library of Ashur Banipal is the oldest, founded in the 7th century BC. The largest library in the world now, in terms of shelf space and number of volumes, in, is the Library of Congress in the Washington, D.C., USA. This library has more than 32 million books, more than 61 million manuscripts, 14 million photos, over 1 million newspapers from the past two centuries, over 5 million maps, etc. At present, with the internet being such a vast source of information, it is itself a library of sorts. And then there is the concept of human library that is yet to gain ground. However, it is quite popular in some circles. This is a not-for-profit learning platform, which much like a regular library. But here, the books are actually human volunteers who speak about their experiences on a particular topic. Copenhagen gave birth to the first human library in 2000 with the Human Library Organization, founded by Ronnie Evergen. According to them, all of our human books are volunteers with personal experience on their topic. The human library is a space where difficult questions are expected, appreciated, and answered. The human library is, in the true sense of the word, a library of people. That was a beautiful passage, very recent and packed with information. But don't be scared, you'll have easier questions here. Okay, are you scared? You will have easier questions and uh, the passage, I hope you all found very informative. Now, uh, may I request uh, Ratnamani Dr. Ma'am, please to read out the questions. Well, or actually, I have some trouble sitting. I'm unable to see this. Yeah, yeah, it's coming now. Are you able to see? Yeah. Okay, it's okay, it's okay now. Yeah, please. Thank you. I hope everyone is enjoying listening skill now. That's a very beautiful soft skill. Uh, and our students, especially, probably now like it. Uh, let me start with the first question. Shall I start? Am I audible? Please. Yes, yes. Yes, yes yeah. Okay. Number one is a press library has printed copies of books and periodicals or CDs, cassettes, and DVDs. The options are, yeah. Very quick reply, I think. Yeah. First option is standard. Second is usual. Third one is traditional and 
conventional last one is conventional ma'am conventional conventional activity yeah let us see let us see correct correct very good very good thank you much yes very good okay the next one Uh, yeah. Next question is: In which year was the first human library founded? Is it the second one? I don't find the number of question. Question number is number. The second one. It is second. The second one. Yeah. Which year was the first human library founded? Nineteen ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand and one, and two thousand and two thousand and two. Two thousand and two. Is it? Two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Two thousand. Second option. Two thousand. Let us see. Correct. Very good. Correct. Very. Yeah. Very good response. Very good listening. Okay. Let us move on. Next question is. Yes. Which place gave birth to the first human library? Which place gave birth to the first human library? Number one, first option is Copenhagen, and second one is Aarhus, third one is Odense, and Petersburg. Okay, Petersburg. Which one will be the correct answer? I am the first one. Copenhagen. Yeah, the yes, listeners are going for the first option, Copenhagen. Good, ma'am. Yes. Let's see. Yes, correct answer. The U.S. faculties are really getting sharper and sharper. The more you practice, the more your uh, faculty will develop. Okay. Uh, Good sign for all of us. <laughs> I let us go for the ne uh, next question. The question is: Which is the largest library in the world now, in terms of shelf space, number of volumes? Library of, library of Congress. And library very, of Congress. Very good. Very quick good. answer. Good. Very good. Very fast. And quick response. Thank Very you. Good. Really, we feel really happy and blessed. Our children yeah. are doing well now. Yeah. Next question. How did uh, Paulo Coelho decide to keep in his library? How many? Four hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Wow! Great. Many responses Very at the same good. time. Very good. Very good. I think the greatest number of the positive responses. Uh, yeah, in for this question, or at least for that, I have to quit audio. Very good. So the third audio, you you see, you have improved such a lot. Now, Paulo Coelho is from Brazil, Scotland, Japan, or Sri Lanka. Ma'am, Brazil. 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 Correct. Correct. Oh, very nice. Correct. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very correction nice. this time. Yes. So our now. students are going to score full marks now this time. Yes. True. <laughs> Amazing, really. We should do uh, some uh, more such practices, I think, because yeah. it matters a lot. Now, yes. definitely. Yes. Yeah. This question, Oil who believes a book should never be confined to a desk. Square yeah. room, library, shelf, or box. Then library. 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 Uh, yeah. Should never be confined to a shelf. Okay. Anyway, uh, anyway. your two answers correct, and we are very very happy with your performance. Your improvement is, you know, very noticeable in. Uh, improvement from the first to the third. 
this is the fourth I think the fourth yeah doing very well now only one more example left we shall try it and for that we will go to the website again once more let's take a and uh, let's take uh, the last uh, passage from here and uh, give it a listening to hear it again or are you ready for the questions hello am i audible arthana yes ma'am yes yes, yes. have you heard 
Yes, then uh, I'd like to know from Dibakar, Raj, Balab, and all the students present here whether they have uh, heard and whether they were able to take in all that had, that has been narrated in the audio. Or would you like to listen once more? Or uh, shall we go to the questions, Dibakar? Yes, ma'am, we shall go. You want to go? Okay. Yes, Ranjalotto, sir, will be asking you, uh, you know, reading out the questions. Okay. Uh, I hope that you have uh, listened to the audio very carefully. Because uh, this time, uh, you won't get the options. You won't get the option A, B, C, or D. You will get some hints if you want. So let us move to the first question. You have to give the answer directly. According to the author, Banaras is the hub of the Hindu. Yes, what's the answer? Hindu what? Take your time. Can you go for the hint? So the correct answer in the letter is U. So the answer starts with the letter U. That is the hint. The answer starts with the letter U. That is the hint. According to the author, Banaras is the half of the Hindu. The answer starts with the letter U. Yes, we try to guess it now. show you the answer when you say so if you when you are ready to give up say uh, we are giving up then we'll show you the answer yes you, you try to give the answer it it does not matter if it's wrong also we will show you the answer later on River. No, it starts with you. You. Universe. New universe. Okay. I'll show the answer. Yes. 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 According to the Brilliant. author, Brilliant. Banaras is the hub of the Hindu universe. Very the good. Second one. The second question. The author was saying in Banaras with A. The author was staying in Banaras with A. With whom did the author stay in Banaras? With a friend. A friend, sir. A friend, okay. Yes, that is the correct answer. Good. A friend. Question number three. In Banaras, the author and a friend arranged a what did they arrange? The author and her friend. They arranged a. So, shall we go for the hint? Okay, I'm going for the hint. The answer starts with the letter B. The answer starts with the letter B. What did I read? With the letter B. Okay. 
What's the answer? Who can give the answer? Sir, Brahman. Brahman. Okay, I'm showing the answer. Both right. It's not Brahman. The correct answer. They arrange the boat right. The boat right. It starts with the letter B. Question number four. The author and her friend went out before. The author and her friend went out before. Sunrise. Before? Sunrise. Sunrise, okay. Yes, that is the correct answer. Very good. Before sunrise. The next question. The author calls the site of the worship of the sun as. The author calls the site of the worship of the sun as. Strange. Yeah. Yeah, someone is answering. Strange. Okay. Sun and yes. Strange. Yeah. It's good. Very good. Strange. <laughs> the author called the site of the worship of the sun as strange. Question number six. The author points out that the Hindus regard the city of Banaras as. The author points out that the Hindus regard the city of Banaras as. Can we have the hint? Okay. The answer starts with the letter H. Letter H. I think it's holy. Should be holy. Yeah. Holy. Yes. Yes, it's I remember holy. holy. You remember Holly? Yes. Okay. The next one. The people in the procession coming down towards the river were singing a. Were singing a. The people in the procession coming down towards the river were singing a. What did they say? There was a funeral, I guess. Funeral, I think funeral song of time. Maybe. Okay. I'm giving you the hint. It's, it starts with D. It starts with the letter D. Dutch. Okay. Right. What is a dirge? It's a funeral hymn, right? They were singing a dirge. We will move to the next question. The procession that the author mentioned here was carried on the occasion of a the procession funeral. that the author funeral. Funeral. Yes, good. Funeral. Question number nine, the adjective that the author uses to describe the Oviras is. The adjective that the author uses to describe the Oviras is. What is the adjective? Sir, Yes, it starts with Q. It starts with the letter Q. Yes. What is the answer? You think? What did you heard? Q. 
Should I go for the answer? Okay, yes, yes I think it's, it's right, quack. The last question, the author calls the city of Banaras, the author calls the city of Banaras, What did I also call? Be something really something related to religious, maybe something orthodox. Lisa, can you go with the hint? Oh, the letter O. The letter orthodox O. Mean. Orthodox. Yes, that is the correct answer. So, uh, what was the difference here? that in the previous audios, you had the option A, B, C, and D. But this time, it was the direct question, and you have to give the direct answer. But yes, here also you have scored well. So we, we have seen that within the short period, yeah, from the first audio to the last audio, you have developed a lot of listening skill. And if you, Go on practicing. That will help you in many levels of your life. So over to now, Ornima Ma'am. Thank you very much for all your cooperation. And as uh, Pranjal Dutta sir has already said, I think uh, you uh, yourself have uh, discovered this, that uh, through practice, you listening faculties can develop, isn't it? And uh, the exercises that we just did, you know, have proved because you were moving, you know, uh, faster to uh, first one, you were quite slow because you didn't know how to listen probably. You were not focused enough. And then your capacity somehow, you know, went on increasing. It never came back. You know, there was no, uh, this one, uh, movement backwards, always forward. You see, so in everything in life, actually, and so is it with, it, especially while you're learning a skill. Skill is acquired through experience and practice. The more you practice, the more your skills will develop. All right? And... Uh, to improve your listening, you know that you need to concentrate and that will improve your concentration, uh, you know, the ability to concentrate in other things as well, right? And your studies will automatically uh, improve. So one thing leads to another. And uh, if you listen well, your speaking ability will also, you know, develop. And I would advise uh, you all to sometimes at least read out loudly, not very loudly as we did in our childhood, but at least, you know, uh, in an audible way, so that you can hear you, yourself, you know, reading out. Uh, that is a, a useful practice that I have found. Anyway, I'd like to thank you all for your cooperation. And uh, I'd like to thank the organizers and especially like to thank uh, Principal Sir for making us uh, part of this virtual lab sessions, uh, you know, which is actually meant for science or so we thought. Then Sir came up with the idea that, of course, these are also, you know, uh, very much available for English. So uh, why not, uh, you know, include a session for you all? And uh, so we did, and here we are, and we thoroughly enjoyed presenting this uh, small, you know, skill before you. And uh, we feel really prou proud and privileged to be a part of this workshop. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, the faculty members present here, the guests. Uh, thank you, students, and thank you, organizers. And with that, uh, on behalf of all my friends, uh, I wish you a very good evening. And thank you all. Yeah. And over to thank you. Thank you very thank much, ma'am. Yes. yes, yes. Thanks, thank Dr. Orunima Bora. Ma'am, for your mention of Saksat Bhashya Lab created by IIT Guwahati. Hope our students will be able to learn many more things, not only listening, but also vocabulary, grammar, and many more by going through the assigned lab. I really appreciate the way the practice questions you have been organized. 
I am sure the exercise will be of great help for all uh, those who have attended it. At the end, I would like to repeat that listening is a skill that people often lack. We need to try and cultivate it. I would like to say thank, thank you to all the faculty members of the Department of English, Jorhat Kendriya Mahavidyalaya, for their efforts to make this part of workshop is a successful one. So thank you, Dr. Rudima Bora, Pranjal Dotto, Ratnamani Dotto, and also Parchana Bordolesi. So thank tomorrow you. we have tomorrow we have uh, another practice morning practice session and also the validatory session too. So hope to meet you there. Uh, so we will meet there again in this same virtual platform. So till then, goodbye. And I also wind up this session with these words. So thanks.